Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel. What is going on out there, everybody? Real quick, we're going to get through this real quick because I am freaking tired. Just got back in town. But I'm a man of my word. Okay, it's not. it wasn't that bad. All right. Um, batteries. Y'all saw the title. We're going to talk about uh, car batteries. Okay. Batteries in general. Anything that go on a gasoline combustion engine. So it could be a truck, car, diesel. Some, some vehicles take two batteries. However, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of batteries. Not so much the ones you should avoid. We're going to talk about the ones you should get. Let's do it like that. All right. Because we can... By me stating the ones you should get based on the ratings, um, will pretty much automatically tell you the ones you should stay away from. Okay, now batteries are um, they, it's it's kind of weird. Have batteries as you go, if you're in the market to buy a battery, there's a couple of things you need to uh, factor in. Keep in mind, okay. Number one, number the number one thing we're concerned with when we in the market to buy anything is this: how much it costs. Okay, we will neglect. Oh, we will stop giving a care about how well the battery is. All of it depends on how much it costs. So I got a couple of batteries on this list that uh, mention that. In fact, I, cost is uh, the most determining factor in which battery you purchase. Batteries have gone up, guys. Long gone are the days of $50 batteries. All right. Yes, there are some few batteries that are... Uh, Walmart, JT, thank you, my buddy, JT, checking in with the donation. I have to recognize these guys that do the donation. Uh, so batteries, guys, like I say, they're unique. All right? If you're in the market to buy one, now I'm not sure how long you guys are getting out of y'all batteries. What is it, man? The, five, the days of the five-year batteries are poof, gone, long gone. When the last time you had a, hell, forget a battery. When the last time you had a car for five years? Nobody keeping their car that long. So nobody can really judge or gauge how long they keep their battery because they get rid of the car sometime before the battery give out. On the flip side of that, they replace their battery a lot. I bought a 2017 brand new Cherokee in 2017. I needed a battery in 2018. I didn't do nothing unusual that I would do on any car to require that battery to fail. I didn't floor it. I didn't leave lights on. I didn't do some of this stuff are idiot proof, guys. You can't leave a lot of things on. Ignition off draw is what I'm talking about. Some cars are idiot proof. You can't even be an idiot in your own damn car. Wait a minute. You can't do it. So your car will shut off stuff that your idiot self leave on. Now, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about why do batteries fail so prematurely or all right, let me pose the question like this. Have anybody gotten five years out of a battery lately? <laughs> lately? Anytime? I, that's a long time, man. I don't know nobody keep up with anything for five years. But, guys, we're talking about batteries and which ones you should get. Now, there's a vicious rumor going out, and I'm saying rumor because I'm entitled to my opinion just as well as y'all. Everybody got a freaking opinion, right? So I'm going to voice mine. Oh. Uh, now, it's not a rumor. It's just what I hear all the time. Technically, guys, there's only two companies in the world that make batteries. From there, the sticker goes on the battery from the different manufacturers. And, you know, even Mopar got their hand in on it. Like, we want one, too. We want the good one, though. We want the good one. All right, here you go, Mopar. These are yours. Hold on. We got our sticker for it. We tape our sticker on it. They are now considered Mopar batteries. Mopar ain't made a damn thing, but we got Mopar batteries. All right, same go with all them other batteries. All right, forget that. Uh, guys, also, long gone are the days that you are in control of how long your battery lasts. In other words, ain't nothing you can do, in my opinion, to make your battery last. The maintenance free batteries are freaking gone, right? Yes, it used to be a time. I don't know who in here old. Who in here old? 69 Dark Man up there in age. All right, man, you remember the batteries you used to have to maintain? Yes, those days are long gone, guys. I don't know if anybody can pop the cap on their battery and pull some stuff in it. Water, liquid, acid, whatever you want. It, it, no, you can't get it open no more. All right, now, forget that. Uh, Yeah, you can't, you can't say, uh, I do my battery right. I take care of my battery. I treat my battery right. <clears throat> By doing what? Only thing you have control over on your own personal car battery is keeping it clean. From a physical standpoint, you know, the little small under the hood, 
dirt and, and the acid that forms on even that shouldn't be happening but that's the only thing you have control over as far as helping to p- the prolong the life of your battery other than that it's out of your hands play up ain't nothing you can do <laughs> just out of your hands so without talking so damn much let me go over we're gonna talk we're gonna go find out which batteries consumer report have deemed the best all right now top batteries of Oh, this is 2023, so it's a fairly new list. Guys, imagine that. I have no idea why this ever started up here, okay? Okay, okay, they they, they deem that best value. All right, I give them that. But other than that, Walmart, I don't know how they made the cut. But according to uh, Popular Science uh, a, a article, they did a bunch of consumer reporting and research. The best overall battery is uh, the Die Hard. Now, I just got through saying there's only one or two or three companies out there that make batteries for everybody. Which begs the question, what separates, uh, why do Die Hard get the label and the tags to uh, be deemed the top? Okay, do Die Hard battery last a long, oh, let me pose the question like this. What determines a good battery? Longevity, right? (laughs) Anything that lasts a long time is going to be considered good. So, anybody out there that own or have a Die Hard battery in their car, is it lasting is it doing what it's supposed to do remember guys a lot of life a lot of a lot of ways to or i won't say ways but your battery's life is dependent on your car's electrical system so hypothetically if you got an alternator acting funny you know how them alternators be doing sometimes acting funny uh yeah that can shorten the life of your battery so number one thing your electrical system got to be on point and then you can start gauging if you have a good battery or not but consumer report uh, has determined that um uh, best battery out there happens to be the diehard battery how we choose the best batteries when it comes to car batteries they have been imp- improvement over the years y'all believe that this is a big joke <laughs> no they have been going down over the years who the hell talking about the improvements over the years overall they've stayed relatively uninformed in form and function not all are created equal all right all batteries not created equal okay i'm following you however and the pricing reflects that or if you like me and you had to break out the jumper cables again for the same project card then the time to replace that battery all right i want to know to get a closer blah blah blah, blah, blah the best car battery reviews and recommendation all right like i said earlier die hard won that title as far as who sell die hard sears uh i don't know peter hey, man what's going on uh oem batteries blow <laughs> i eat battery acid stop uh what up bro punch how all oh, turbo tom uh oh, turbo tom uh mopar didn't make the list turbo tom any chrysler guys in here mopar guys yes uh mopar didn't make the list i don't even, mopar don't even make damn batteries well anyway guys i jump straight to the top why it made the cut the die hard brand is one of the most recognized name in the industry i give them that and their platinum AGM is as environmentally friendly as lead acid batteries come. All right, guys, I forgot to mention the proper battery plays a major role in the longevity of your battery. Okay, so if your car calls for a 750 cold cranking amp battery and you go buy a 500 cranking amp PT Cruiser battery, wait a minute, that ain't going to, yeah, that ain't right. Stop it. Do the right thing. All right, so specs, okay, specs vary from car to car. A big Chrysler 300 looking for 750 cold cranking app. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, now, get this, guys. The warranty on that battery is three years. There was a time when this used to say five years. A couple of pros and cons. Enough capacity to handle multiple accessories, such as you sticking stuff in your cigarette lighter and running things. Okay. Two-hour reserve capacity available in all common side here go the cons it's costly yes it's a freaking expensive all right anybody got 500 dollars for a freaking die battery all right warranty shorter than cheaper batteries all right uh three years is quite a long time but the thinking goes if you buy one of these big dollar batteries you shouldn't have to replace it for three years so that is i know some people some customers that will take that trade off guys all right. Yes, there are some that money ain't an issue. All right, let's go to the next uh, category. Best green, most sustainable. Anti-gravity lithium batteries, guys. Uh, yes, I am not too familiar with that. 
why it made the cut moving away from lead and acid can only be a good thing in the long run says who and this battery feature set really puts it ahead of the competition couple of specs let's go straight to the pros incredibly light all right so if you're trying to maintain the lightness of your vehicle car makers already doing that guys remember they took away the spare tire so <laughs> yeah uh tons of cranking amp oh you get a high look at that guys 1200 that says a hey, did not list cca okay they don't list it but the pros is you get a ton of cranking amp restart tech means no dead batteries I got to read more into that. I never knew there was such a thing. What's up, David? Renegade's Garage, Lakes Automotive in the building, Nevada Badger. Um, yes, hold tight, guys. Uh, Cuns, expensive as hell by any standards. I wonder how much that thing costs. I am curious, and one day I'm going to find some time. Really expensive. You could buy two of any other picks, and you'd be getting close. So, the thing is quality as well as expensive. All right, guys, I did not know this. You learn something new every day. There is a battery that's rated for the temperature of the weather wind. We're coming up on the summertime, right, which means it's going to be hot. So, should you go out and buy a hot battery? <laughs> Look at this, guys. Best hot battery. The Odyssey, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Extreme. All right, so if you say stay in Arizona where it's 100 degrees all the time, you might want to get you one of these. AGM battery, Odyssey. Uh, why it made the cut? When the weather pushes the mercury way up there, guys, then the Odyssey Extreme uh, is ready to take the heat and keep on cranking. I always thought cold cranking out was a problem. I've never seen a battery that would give uh, H, or how, how would you say hot cranking out? HCA. Or is that what this is? Yeah, I got to educate myself a little bit more. But I do know CCA stands for cold cranking amp. But according to this, if it's hot time, uh, uh, summer temperatures, you might want to go with an Odyssey. I don't know, guys. That is crazy. All right, pros and cons. Huge operating temperature range. Nearly three hours of reserve capacity designed for frequent discharges. Cons, not small, not cheap. <laughs> That's what uh, many of us want to know. I'm sorry. Peter. What's up, man? Hey, Rocks Rose in the building. What's up, Lady Rocks? How are you this lovely Sunday? Rocks Rose. I bet Rocks got one of those uh, Walmart. Uh, what's the name of that Walmart battery? Oh, we coming up on your battery, Rocks. Hold tight. All right. Uh, yes, that's the cons, guys. It's not small and it's not cheap. All right. Best cold weather. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. CCA, cold cranking out. So, guys, if you live in Rock's territory, I think Rock's, what are you telling me you from, Arizona or somewhere? I forgot what you said. Anyway, whoever live in cold climates, this is likely the battery you should be using. Says who? I, I don't know. I Why it made the cut? Optima is famous for making great batteries. And though the red top is billed as the brand's standard use case battery, it's the best battery we can find. Guys, y'all know they changed the plastic on batteries. A lot of guys... Uh, I'm not going to say they rumors. I'm not going to say it's a myth, but a lot of guys still fuss at me about setting a battery on the concrete. Uh, they're thinking behind that is it drains the battery. That was the case back when battery wasn't using real good plastic. I, I don't never call somebody a lie. Like I, I'm a big fan of you are entitled to your opinion. Okay. You tell me, I can't believe you put that battery on the floor, on the ground like that. Hey, whoa, whoa, player. Hold on, big pimping. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't see an issue with it. Now, if you see an issue with it, don't you set your freaking batteries on the floor. All right? I got this. All right? Uh, pros. Rate it down to 50. Ooh. Negative 50. That's out there with Uncle Mark and them at, in Canada where it's cold. Wait a minute. That would do us no good where I'm at. Resist damage from vibration well. Guys, your battery should not be vibrating. Your hold down should be on it. Not cheap. These are the cons. Short warranty for the cost. All right. We down here with uh, Rocks Rose. <laughs> I promise you, I bet you Rocks got one of these. Rocks is like one of those uh, Walmart type ladies. Florida kills battery. What you mean? I got mine. Oh, you got a Mopar battery, lady? Dr. R. Rehab, what's going on, man? Uh, Sean J, at least a grand. Damn, for what? A grand for what? I ain't buying no battery for no $1,000. That's more than my car. Wait a minute. All right, let's finish. We got one more, guys. Batteries. Everstart. Everybody heard of Everstart. That's because at Ruli, Optima batteries aren't that good anymore. Hold on. Let me see what Ruli's saying. 
I, I really a parts guy, so whatever Ruley says, I'm interested in. Aren't that good anymore? They were great 20 years ago, but they really went down here since. Whoa, wait a minute. Oh, here go another Optima hater. <laughs> Optima sucks. I had two of them die on me. Hey, man, you heard what this article said about Optima? Hey, 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 uh, Darhemi, why don't you go get you one of these, then? All right, guys, we're talking about budget-friendly batteries, all right? Best budget. So to get the best bang for your buck, if you on a low budget, have no fear. That's a battery for you as well. And ladies and gentlemen, it is called the Everstar. Yes, I got one on my PT crew. Why it made the cut? Sometimes you just need a freaking battery, guys. Wait a minute. It don't even, it ain't that serious. I'm just going to work and back. I don't need no damn Optima or none of that stuff. Okay, just get me something I can get back and forth to work. And that's where Everstar come in. All right, why I made the cut? Sometimes you just need a battery and you want to spend a bunch of money. And those times, Walmart Everstar brand is your battery. All right, nice specs. Here go the pros and the cons. Often available in store, which means you ain't got to freaking get on the internet and order. You just go to Walmart. That's got to be something in Walmart you need it anyway. Wait a minute. So just kill two birds and one stone. Go in there and get you some food, some cookies, and some cakes, and some washing powder. And while you're in there, pick up your battery. How's that? Yeah, one-stop shop. What is Dark Man saying? A local shop used to sell... Damn, 900 cranking, cold cranking out batteries with the full fire of burner, and they honored it. Oh, wow. All right, the cons. AGM, not much less than other brands. Cheapest batteries not known for longevity. Think about it, guys. You, This is a budget-friendly battery. And here's the thing about Walmart, because I did a video on that battery that I had to take down because I was wrong. Walmart, you buy a battery, you get a what, six-month warranty or a year or something like that? I dubbed that video, uh, buy this battery, this would be the last battery you buy. In other words, who cares? If it don't last a year, you go to Walmart and get another one. I was expecting to do that every year. I'm a con artist just like y'all, just like everybody else. You know, don't think you're the only one cunning companies. <laughs> yes, I got me an Everstar battery. I'm like, this is my last battery I'm ever buying because if it go bad, it's going back. We can do this every year, player. I ain't got nothing but time. So, uh, but I was wrong. I think that's a one-shot deal. All right, if I'm not mistaken, the cons, AGM, oh, we already went over the cons. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple of things you should consider before even buying any battery. There's a reason behind the multiple tier in the car battery world. If your car had, ooh, I forgot, factor in auto start, guys, um, or you know you will do a lot of short trips, then a battery that's designed to withstand this sort of use is essential. In other words, if you know you drive a bunch of stuff and a bunch of places and I go somewhere every time, running to the store, running to Walmart all the time, like Rocks Rose be doing. Yes, you might want to think about all that before you factor in which battery you get. Types of battery matter. The vast majority of car batteries are some type of lead acid battery. The most popular fall into two camp, traditional flooded lead acid and absorbent glass mat. There are then there are lithium ion batteries which are starting to make their way into the automotive world. Uh-oh, we talking, uh-oh, we getting into that ever so. Was it better days you got to have another battery in stock? <laughs> I don't mean to go straight to the bottom, guys. Let me take my butt back up to the top. Uh, But listen, uh, frequent ask question. How can I make my vehicle battery last longer? All right, guys, we getting somewhere. Y'all pay attention. Everybody here, it's 121 people in here. Pay a freaking attention. I'm going to tell you guys how to make your battery last longer. At least uh, I'm going to read <laughs> Making your vehicle battery last as long as possible doesn't usually take much effort. I told you, uh, no more maintenance-free batteries, so uh, it's not all up to you. The most important bit, however, is keeping your vehicle batteries, vehicles charging. I said that. I knew I was right. Keep your charging and electrical system in proper operating condition. In other words, guys, if you see your positive and negative post starting to form acid or corrosion around that area, you got to tighten up on that. Guys, I did a video about a battery. Guys were sticking screws in their batteries. Well, let me go big for a minute. Hear me out. I did a battery. I did a video. Some knucklehead keeps sticking screws in their battery to make good contact uh, between the, the terminal and the post. That is a no-no on the new cars, guys, simply because these new cars are so dependent on proper connection battery. Any little thing like a freaking screw can upset or interfere with that proper connection. From there, 
All kinds of crazy things can happen. You can even brick your transmission. What I mean by brick, you can knock it offline, knock it out of proxy alignment, and you go no more. From that point, you better grab this and call a freaking tow truck because your transmission not shifting. That's why I'm beating those guys up. They're beating me up, and I'm returning the favor because we're going back and forth. Look, guys, anything that will affect battery connection on this new stuff is – you crazy for interrupt if you need a terminal go get a terminal don't stick a freaking screw in there to make better connection <laughs> stop it so my point is yes connection is crucial okay we got to get back to the uh we got to get back to the uh all right how to make your battery last long what we leave off keeping the battery charged up that's semi out of your control okay you got to your alternator that's your alternator job to keep your battery charged. All right, let's finish. Aside from the major parts, uh, inspect it semi-regularly and clean off any corrosion you find on the terminal and coat them to prevent it from happening again. The corrosion inhibits charging and discharging of the battery and can put a strain on the whole charging system. Yes, that makes damn good sense. Okay, yes, that makes sense, guys. Corrosion buildup is bad. Guys, remember the old saying, if you got corrosion buildup on the positive post, you're overcharging. <laughs> All these crazy myths are still floating around today. If you got excessive corrosion buildup on a negative post, you're undercharging. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. How long? Let's do this one. How long does a car battery last? That is a, such a weird, crazy question. The length of time a battery lasts often directly relates to how well you've taken care of it. If there's nothing you can do to your battery, in other words, not they, it's maintenance-free, what kind of statement is this? It relates to how well you've taken care of it. How? What can you do to take care of your battery? It's made this free. Freaking article maker, whoever wrote this freaking. Unfortunately, how much you spend on it. Oh, so Rock's Roll. Rock's got a Mopar battery. She says she got hers from the dealer. She she bougie. You know, she got to have top of the line. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, how much you spend on it? Spend $50 on a cheap one with a one-year warranty like me at Walmart. And it's not likely to last four years. <laughs> Damn, they put it pretty bluntly. Then all else being equal or a more expensive battery. Guys, no, 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 no. I don't agree with that. Just because you go to a store, a store, store, whatever, go to another store, and you see a battery sitting there for five hundred dollars. Ooh, I'm gonna get this one because it's the most expensive, so it has to be the best. Just because something is more expensive doesn't mean it's better than everybody else. I always use this example. I don't know if y'all have these franchises in y'all area. Y'all ever heard of Publix grocery store? Publix and uh, Kroger's or Walmart. Publix can have the same Kellogg's brand of Fruit Loops, same size box. Publix costs $5 or $10. Kroger's down the street, same box, Kellogg's brand Fruit Loops. Same size box, they cost $3. There are some people out there that literally thinks, I'm going to publish and get theirs. There's $10, so it has to be better. It has to, Kellogg's made public stuff a whole lot better than Kroger's. That's not how that works, man. Just because stuff is more expensive at a mall, and that same freaking brand, brand, brands disperse that stuff out to distributors in hopes of selling it. Okay, they may give some to the mall. They're going to give some to Walmart. You feel better going to the mall to get yours because it's more expensive? Oh, does that make the quality better? Same is in Walmart. So that's what I mean by Publix and, and Walmart or Kroger's. Why is Publix so freaking high for the same thing? It's a perception thing. People are mentally challenged, man. What? I, it don't make sense. <sighs> All right. Y'all about to get me riled up. Stop it, people. Just because something costs more doesn't mean it's better. All right? Do some homework. Do some research. Let me get through this. How to charge a car battery. That's not in your control, but we'll go over this anyway. There are two main ways to charge your car battery. Oh, that is in your control if you're using an external charger. Okay? Yep, keep the terminals clean. What's up, MC such and such? And so on my journey, I put a new one in every five years, no matter what. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. Should you just, after a certain length of time. All right, we're talking about charging. Uh, Yes, this is all if you have an external charger, but you shouldn't need to externally charge your battery unless 
I don't know. If you don't have a charger, then you can make sure to charge up your car batteries by going for a long trip. Yes, your alternator should do its job and fully charge your battery back up for perhaps 30 minutes while assuming the charging system is working. All right. Cold cranking out. Banging battery manufacturers have used CCA ratings to do a lot of bragging. But for the most of the country, it's not something we should give so much weight to. Ah, interesting. You see, cold cranking or cranking amps is the output of battery at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. When water freezes into ice, when water freezes into ice, cold cranking amps is the measurement of how much the battery can put out at zero degrees. Did y'all know that? Did y'all have y'all ever given this much thought? I mean, I'm guilty of this too, bragging on C3, CCA, and I had never given it much thought. Let me read that part again. Cold cranking amps is the measurements for how much the battery can put out at zero degrees Fahrenheit. There certainly are parts of the country that see zero. Yes, <laughs> I've lived there. But if your winter only dips into 20, then you probably don't need to spend a lot of extra money to get a, a high cold cranking amp rating battery. How do I know if I need a new car battery? This is interesting. We're going to do two more, and then we're going to the comments. Unfortunately, there often isn't much warning from, oh, man, that sucks. And they write from your car battery when you need a new car battery. My experience has usually been normal operating right up until the dreaded click, 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 click. That's why it's so important, guys, to keep an external battery source in your car, such as a jump box. <laughs> I mean, I got a jump box. I gave like three jump boxes away on my live stream. Especially if you're running an inexpensive battery. So I guess what they're saying is if you got to ever start from Walmart, wait a minute, you might want to keep a jump box in your damn glove compartment. Final thoughts. All right, we're almost done. Getting the right car battery can make the difference when you're dealing with some of the extremes the country can throw at you. As you start researching and shopping for a battery, take into consideration where you'll be spending most of your time, how much you value a free replacement warranty, and how much you can spend. If you decide to buy one of the car batteries on this list, make sure you're paying for the features you need and not wasting money on things you don't. All right. So if you Uncle Mark living out there in negative zero, minus zero, under zero, right there near zero, negative, positive zero, then yes, CCA should be your biggest freaking uh, concern. <laughs> All right. For the most part. Yes, exactly. For the most part. So, uh I don't know. What did I say was number one? I want to know who in here got one of these because I want to know how it's going. If you're in the comments or if you're in the stream and you happen to own or you got one of these on your car, tell me when you got it, how long you've had it, and how well it's doing. Is that a decent question? Always get one that has caps you can remove. That These days are gone, right, guys? Uh, Ruly, a parts guy. Ruly, can you still replace... Oh, can you still buy a, a battery you can maintain, pop the caps and put, a, you know, water in? I got to ever start. <laughs> Eric, I like the way you think. Uh, Ruly, whoever here do parts, uh, can you still, this question right here, always get one that has caps you can remove. I'm not sure they even sell batteries that you can maintain. All right. We changed my sisters in her journey uh, a couple months ago. what? Oh, yeah, that journey battery is in front of the wheel. The location of the battery matters, guys. Car makers not just hiding batteries inside to piss you off. I read comments all the time. I can't believe this is the worst design ever. Uh, Sometimes they do it for a reason. Sometimes they do it for space. Sometimes they're trying to find a nice, cool spot to put your battery. And sometimes, again, this is the only space left on the car. All right? So... You be careful how you dog out car makers because, from my understanding, there's a reason for everything they do. Jeep Grand Cherokee Dodge Durango battery is under the right side driver seat, uh, passenger seat. Why? 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 Why the damn battery under there? They have their reason. All right, we'll talk about that on separate videos on why companies putting their batteries in various places. Uh, it could be a number of reasons, guys, like I say, but they do have, from what I read, real good reason. It's the, and the gases that sometimes be let off by that battery have to be routed outside if your battery is inside. We're we talking major lawsuit. If people have been falling out because they inhaling any kind of dangerous battery 
gases. I forgot the name of it. Is it hydrochloric? The the gases that battery give off when they're, you know, there has to be some type of vent tube going to that battery. If your battery is inside the compartment of the vehicle, make sure your vent tube is on there. It's there. You just need to make sure it's on there, right? It's the law. Car makers have to provide a way for that battery to vent. That hose is going outside the car, maybe under your seat, maybe a hole stabbed in your floorboard, letting out those potential gases. So if you own one, please make sure you're practicing the precautions, okay? Somebody eat battery acid. OEM batteries blow. OEM. OEM is what the car maker recommend. Guys, I've read somewhere where some car makers want specific battery, like GM, like AC Delco. Is that the case? I don't know. I've been in a bubble so long. This stuff I've been reading, okay? Uh, yes, this guy's about to get blocked. I have no idea who that is, but matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now before I forget. Uh, goodbye, clown, whoever you was. Uh, great from Perino, Nevada. Hey, everyone. What's up, David? Uh, so let me do this, guys. Let me go through the comments. Uh, I still want to know if anybody own one of these. Anybody got one of these in their car? Uh, Rox Rose says she have a Mopar. Okay. Um, uh, what's up, Lakes Automotive in the building? What's up, Lakes? I heard you had a contest coming up. I was watching one of Fluffy's live stream. Fluffy Mexican, guys. Y'all know Fluffy. My dude, my home biscuit skillet. I he, he do live stream too. He just late and I can't catch him sometimes. But uh, I heard him mention that Lake's doing something. I don't know if I missed that or what. Y'all got to keep me up to date, man, because I be wanting to participate in this stuff when time permit. But uh, YouTube driving me crazy right now. I've been working a lot of me. It's cool, though. Uh, yes, that's what's up, Lakes. Everybody uh, speak to my homie, home skillets. AGM batteries can last upwards of five to seven years. Interesting, Zachary Shemiska. That is very interesting. Uh, I have never had a car that long, so it's hard for me to. Uh, yes, I saw this earlier. What is I used to run a 900 CTA battery in my Dart with the a Dart, a small car. You want that much cold cranking out later? 100 amp alternator. Okay, out of a cop car. <laughs> Dart hit me always. Uh, experimenting with stuff again oem batteries suck why all right guys we need to find out let's do this because this vicious rumor is about only two places make batteries i mean make batteries for everybody in the world how do you google this stuff uh there's only two companies let me try it that way Oh, uh, there's only two companies that make car batteries. No, I don't want to know the top ten. So I'm not gonna get a decent answer like that. Four companies leading the rise of lithium batteries. Automakers are spending billions to produce battery cells for. Oh, they get into the EV stuff. So I really want to know. Or it's just just one another one of those sayings that you know people like to uh, to make about. There's only two companies in the world. Everybody just start putting their stickers on at that point. All right. Uh, <laughs> what's up? What's up, lady? How are you? How's mom doing? How's the family? Hey, boss, you work at a Chrysler dealer? Uh, that is one of my employers. Yes, I work out of four shops, um, but I frequent the dealer from time to time. Yes, Okawakala. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, going on three years with my Walmart battery. My man, my man packing the, where's your battery at? <clears throat> I'm saying, man, Peter. Yeah, I'm sure. Peter rocking the Everstar, y'all. I give it up for Peter. Three year warranty? How'd you pull that off? Um, uh, yeah, I got my that my little one I got from for my PT uh was fifty something bucks, sixty bucks with a year of warranty. All right. So and guys, I, I'm thinking what the warranty means. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh they gonna prorate it from the length of time you had it versus I don't know. That's the way the dealer works sometimes. But uh, that's what's up, Peter. Mine is coming up on damn. What you what you packing, uh, Billy? What you got? What kind of battery you got? Walmart, the cheapest bang for your buck. They never gave me a problem. My man Talk or my friend Talk. I don't know if it's a man or female, but ever start 
uh, it's not that bad, guys. I promise you, man, if you if your electrical system running efficiently, your battery will last an efficient amount of time. Okay. Yes. Crown batteries in Fremont, Ohio, making batteries six days a week. Oh, really? Damn. Interesting. Uh, Turbo Tom. That's what's up. It's three. Oh, hey, I finally got somebody to come in on it. There's three company that makes battery Johnson Control, Exile, and Deathfire. That said, the plant near me is Voltmaster. Three companies. I want to Google one, my friend. I, uh, I, what's, what's the name of one? Exile. That's a battery company, you saying? Exide makes battery. Let me do it like that. E X I D E makes battery. Let's jump straight up. Exide made him. So there's three companies. According to Daniel, Exide was originally a brand name for batteries produced by the electric storage battery company and later became Exide Corporation doing business as Exide Technology. So they make batteries for the masses or just for. Cause they didn't even make the cut. <laughs> Wait a minute, they didn't make the cut of the top batteries in the world. So maybe they making batteries for companies and companies sticking there. I don't know. But uh, thank you, Daniel. That's interesting. All right, my power wagon was six volts. Oh yeah, guys. Uh, you got stop start. Oh, I see some green. I gotta get to this green. My friend Walter drive a 2018 Ram 1500 V6. What is the normal temperature? Because I've been driving. The normal temperature, that varies from vehicle to vehicle, my friend. There is no way I can know that by heart. I'll have to look that up. Now, keep in mind, a typical thermostat going to open at what? 195? Typical. Every thermostat in a vehicle nowadays is going to design to open up at at least 195 degree temperature. Now, the fan, the typical fan temperature when a fan, when the computer is told to turn the fan on, maybe 230. Even hauling, transmission 197. And engine oil is that yeah, these are not really high pressures, guy. Guy, this is a 2018 with a 3.6 Pentastar. If it's a V6, what is the normal temperature? Because I've been driving 2019. Yes, hey, do this, my friend Walter. When your car hit 230, see, notice the range in which you gave us. You said 2019 through 230. If your fan designed to come on at 230. It's probably going to come on at 2.30. When it come on, your temperature is going to drop. Or we, the thinking goes, your temperature should drop once your fan come on. All right. So if that's as high as you're going, maybe your vehicle is running uh, the way it's designed to run. But I don't know about hard when your fan is supposed to come on. When I'm faced with that question, I always want to know what the computer, what do they have the computer tuned at? to tell the fan to come on. When the coolant temp sensor tells the computer the degrees amount, it's at 228, 229, 230. The fan kick in. Yeah, I need to know those things so you can uh, you can pretty much find out if you got a problem based off those numbers. But yeah, once the thermostat open and release that coolant out of the engine, it still can get hot. So you need a fan to pull air through the radiator fans, okay? Pull air, not blow. Now, think about it. You don't really need an electric fan. A lot of trucks have uh, mechanical fan, fan clutches and stuff, and a lot of them just have an electric fan. If you're driving on the freeway, your fan likely will never come on because ram air is ramming into your radiator. Same go for uh, AC, all right? Your AC pressure should never rise to a dangerously high point if you're on the freeway. Even if your fan is broken because ram air is doing the job of a fan. But uh, yeah, that's to me, that's not really high, my friend. But because I'm thinking the fan come on, I can look it up when I get offline. The fan is designed to come on around probably 2 30. All right, uh, Walter, don't whatever you do, whatsoever you do, don't let your car overheat, man. That Pentastars are all aluminum engine. <laughs> Hear me out, and it's easy to walk, it don't take much. If you get to the three quarters, shut her down, shut her down, shut that mug off. All right, because you're gonna get into the territory where you know those are soft aluminum cylinder heads. That Pinnastar is equipped with a, a block, 
that's semi-aluminum as well as the heads. So people kill me when they go, man, I bought them blue head gasket. I let my car got so hot, it blew a head gasket. No, fool. You done warped your damn motor. You done ruined your car. You can't blame. Yeah, it was all the way on the H. It went after H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I got to I. I come out the H. This dude driving this car, he passed the H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. He had J, K, L, M, N, O, P. He done went all the way back around. Wait a minute. That ain't right. That is too freaking hot. So, uh, yes, you can't do that and say, I blew a head gasket. Man, I tell you what, these Chryslers are a piece of jerk. I blew a head gasket, man. I let it get too hot. I'm going to take the heads off and put a gasket on it. You, I ain't doing head gaskets no more. I put that out there. I got so much flack. You ain't no mechanic. You don't know what the hell you're doing. You can't do a head gasket. It ain't that I can't do it. Number one, the company said no. Number two, I agree with the company. I ain't, no, man. Unless the head gasket is leaking. Like you pressure test it and you can see coolant pissing out of them between the block and the head. That's the only way you get in the head gasket. If if your history dictates or you tell me, yeah, it got real hot and now it's leaking. Because that's the first thing I'm going to ask you. Did you get it hot? How hot did you get it? Was you even close to the H? If she say a little bit, I'm no, you get a freaking engine. No, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. All right, I got to move on. Because, actually, yeah, I got to go. It's 9 o'clock. So let me play with a few more of these questions. Guys, we got to wrap this up. I'm sorry. I can only give an hour. Very few bad. This is interesting. Pro-rated warranties anymore. Most have went to a shorter overall warranty. Oh, with the longer free replacement warranty and no pro-rated period. Uh, thank you, Ruli. That is very uh, interesting, to say the least. Very interesting. Now I know my <laughs> shut up, man. Hey man, I'm trying to figure out what come out the H. Cause if you just keep driving your car and it's on the H, that ain't cool, man. Y'all stop it. In fact, guys, let's use the barometer of three quarter. Just pretend the H is not there. H is bad. H is borderline done. <clears throat> I'm telling you, it don't take much. A freaking PT cruiser. You can let that damn thing overheat for two minutes. Tops. I'm almost home. JT, I'm on the phone. I'm calling JT. They got me on the phone. Yeah, it's dark out here. Three o'clock in the morning. I ain't about to pull over. Well, where your hand at? Where your temperature at? It's so a little bit right before H. Oh, you done. You might as well come on home, dog. You might as well go home. Hey, you, that's a wrap for you. And the PT Cruise on soft aluminum head is warped and cooked. <laughs> I did my last PT Cruiser cylinder head gasket 10 years ago. People call me cuckoo and crazy. You ain't no mechanic. <sighs> I ain't no dumb mechanic. Okay, how about that? Yeah, sucker. Y'all can keep playing. Ain't nobody going to be doing nothing that hard with that much risk. Yeah, when I ramp up the freeway. Okay, let me see. When I ramp up the freeway, and the gauge slightly passes from normal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I ramp up on the freeway, and you're getting on the freeway, you're coming up down the ramp. The gauge slightly passes from normal when I see on digital shows 235. It's the highest I've reached. Okay. Again, let's assume it's Walter again. Let's assume uh, your computer based off all the features that your car is equipped with. Remember, guys, that's a factor. When they tune these vehicles, they base things like, uh, if this is a tow package, is this a heavy-duty package, is this a HBZ up transmission, blah, 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 blah. And then they're programming. Based on all that stuff, Walter got on his truck. Let's program his, piece, his fan to come on at 230 degrees. Okay? You're driving alone. You reach 230. You're going up fast. You reach 230. The fan kick in. But there's going to be a slow reaction, right? Yeah, it ain't going to go right down soon the fan kick on. That stuff got to register. So your fan is blowing, but you steady climbing a little bit. 223. No, what I say? Where we at? 231, 232, 235. The fan is, everything is flowing now. Starting to come back down. I don't think you have a problem, guy. Again, this is based off when your fan designed to come on. Your fan designed to come on at 230. This is not a problem. 
you might be thinking too much into it. Okay. But it's good that you monitor and you care. A lot of people don't, you know, don't, don't, I don't know. They don't pay no attention to the, some of the warning signs, potential warning signs. I'm not saying it's a problem, but um, yeah, it's, it's cool. You, you up on this. Now I would say this, you, you, you fail to mention the mileage on this thing, but there are some things that should have been done to your vehicle at this point. If I had to guess, Walter, you said it's a 2018 with a 3.6 Pentastar. If I had to guess, you got over 100,000 miles, right? Have you done things like cooling system flush? Remember, guys, the 2018, we're talking about Chrysler Dodge, FCA. Take coolant that's designed to last 10 years. Oh, what a joke. I can't believe I said that. It's a market employee. I, I ain't letting no, first of all, I ain't going to own a car for 10 years. But... On the jug, it says 10-year cooling, and it's purple. So you this is not a 10-year car, vehicle. It's a 2018. However, miles should be taken into consideration. If it's a high-mileage, low-year model car or newly new car, just say, guys, you can put 100,000 miles on a 2022 model vehicle, just so you know. So don't really base everything off time. Base it off uh, mileage. Depending on how you gauge the situation. But my friend, what there's some things you're supposed to be doing on this vehicle at certain miles intervals. Okay. Yes. I'm not obviously I'm not talking about the year. That's 10 year cooling. You not we're not in 2018 or 2028 right now. Okay, you follow me? So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things like now, a lot of people, I'm about to do a video on that because I want to talk about that. Things you should do at a certain miles that's not recommended by it, that's not in the recommendation for car makers. Things like thermostats should be replaced, guys. I don't know, 40, 50,000 miles. Number one, it's so freaking expensive. Oh, oh my God, get this, get this. It is so freaking easy. So why not? Why not? All right, yeah, so... <laughs> It's easy and on some cars now it's easy. Let me take that back. But um, it's inexpensive and it's easy. So yeah, stay. Do what you're supposed to do, my friend. Again, I don't know how many miles on this, so but we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Uh, Walter, again, whatever you do, whatsoever you do, don't let it overheat. All right. Uh, ninety C water pump thermostat radiator change. Walter done done everything. Walter's kind of concerned, and I don't blame you. Uh. Damn, you said radiator too? So you should not have any kind of restriction at the radiator at all. I personally think you are putting, as a tradesman, I think you are putting too much thinking into uh, those numbers. If, and if considering Julian Coma check vacuum leak hoses intake. Uh, wow, 49 on my 2015. See, Mike, you don't go nowhere. Obviously, Walter might be using this as a work truck. Uh, Walter, 97,000 miles, you know, replaced all of this already. You might not even have a problem, guy. You, you, you reaching 235 and then it fall down. Yeah. Now, I'm sure by now, all the air pockets is out. Even if you didn't bleed it properly when you done this. The more you drive a car, air pockets going to have to, they're going to be forced to leave. They cannot survive in that state that's constantly driving. And if your heater blowing hot, chances are you don't have any air pockets. So, um, yeah, my friend, um, find out, call the dealer and find out when that fan is designed to come on. Or I can look it up tomorrow when I, if I uh, remember. But, um, yeah, but whatever you do, like I say, don't let it overheat. All right, guys, I got to wind this down. See you, homie, stuck in a Chrysler Diplomat. Battery dead with the left front flat. What's up, my <laughs> What? Stuck in a Chrysler Diplomat, battery dead with the left front tire flat. Uh, did you help him? Eric, Eric, I know you got out and helped this dude. Eric, Eric appreciate the donation. Walter and Eric, I appreciate the donations, my friend. Uh, it goes toward the channel and it helps the channel tremendously. My 05 Amarda got 200,000 miles, never been in the shop. All right, we got a bragger on the, in the room. We got a bragger in the chat room. Mr. Stankmouth here seemed to be insinuating that 
he have a super reliable vehicle, okay? When you brag on such things as this, guys, you're basically saying, my car is better than yours, my car, nah, 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 boo, boo. And maybe so. Uh, you're a bad man, guys. If this is true, I, who am I to call you a lie? I'm going to consider it true because you didn't have to tell us, right? 05 on top of that, it's never been in the shop. One of two things. You your own mechanic, or you just one lucky mother swallow. Wait a minute, shut your mouth. Can't do that. Mama might be listening. She's supposed to be in church right now. She might be in church. Yeah, clapping and looking. Wait, did he just cuss? Hold on, Reverend. Stop, JT. Um, Devin, what's up, my friend? Uh, still stuck there to this day. What do you mean? Devin Wheeler, his buddy. <laughs> Stop it, Devin. Uh I I don't even want to know what Devin talk about, but uh, Devin, thanks for the donation, but I'm lost and I'm gonna pretend I don't know what you're talking about. I right. don't jinx your own vehicle. Oh, <laughs> uh, yo, yo, Walter gonna talk some. Walter gonna talk up on a problem. No, it's okay to be concerned. Uh, Walter Castro, two different Walters. I uh, had to decode the same thing. It's annoying. Thanks. Could be a bad temp sensor. A temp sensor, ladies and gentlemen, is designed to report back to the computer the temperature of the a coolant. Okay. So, yes, that is vital information. Guys, do you know when you first start your car up in the morning, your car go into, your car look at the temperature of the, the vehicle, the coolant and everything. Outside air temperature, battery temperature, coolant temp sensor, temperature, all of that plays a role when you first start your car up in the morning. Okay. Depending on those numbers will dictate of your vehicle, closed loop, open loop. There's new terminology out now. I got to familiarize myself with them. But uh, you're going to close loop when you first start your car. <clears throat> the O2 sensor heaters need to be hot extremely fast. All right? It's going to get a little help from the exhaust because O2 sensors are stabbed into the exhaust system. There's also an electrical heater built on two O2 sensors to help speed up the process. The thing it goes, get them hot real fast so we can hurry up and get in the open loop or closed loop. So, uh, yeah, all of that, the temp sensor, temp, 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 temp sensor, uh, that is crucial. And yes, from time to time, they can fail and give out the wrong reading. Okay. In other words, you can really be at 210 and your Vic show 240. So yeah, it don't hurt to replace that. Is there's a lot of things that don't hurt to replace at a hundred thousand miles. Let me put it like that. We're gonna go over a few on the next video. But right now, I gotta wrap this up, my friends. Guys, it's been real. I appreciate you guys. Grand Cherokee RT on there. I only had a flex plate done. Great van. Oh, Grand Caravan. That could go either way, Grand Cherokee or Grand Caravan. Yes, flat play. You must have heard that little noise. Arr, arr, arr. I did a video on that. It will trick you into thinking you need a motor. And guys, stop freaking telling me a motor and an engine. I know what the hell. I know the difference between a motor and an engine. An uh, engine. All right. It's strategically done that way for algorithm purposes. Okay. Yes. All right. So I know it's okay. I know. Where to find the VIN at on a vehicle? People still beat me up on that uh, cop car. I said, I can't show the VIN. I don't really know how to show it. I was trying to talk my way out of it because I don't want to show the VIN, put the customer's VIN. Do you know how much dissecting you can do from a VIN? It's bad enough you can do a bunch of dissecting from a license plate. But imagine putting a, the VIN on, on the computer. Yeah, there's clowns out there. I'll be so, oh, he owned the car. I'm fit to tell him. Uh, I'm finna call the owner of the car. Yeah, man, ain't nobody put no damn being on the car. Y'all crazy. All right, 12, 200 should be changed every five years. Yes, the 2012, they started the 10-year coolant. If you're talking about coolant, every 10 years. I think that started in 2014, right, Tom? So we were still using, he got a 2018 truck. So we were still using, in 2012, we were using a five-year coolant. I don't even think we got any green cooling anymore, Tom. We don't see cars that old anymore. All right, my sister was bragging on about a lot of trans fluid, and it's been fine for 50,000. 190K to trans exploded <laughs> spectacularly. All right, Devin. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, wait a minute. All right. 
Guys, I'm Dot Shepherd in the building. Shepherd leaving. Thank you, Shepherd, for tuning in. I have to go, guys. That is my time. I've been on for an hour. If I miss you, comment. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, uh, those batteries. I mean, yes. I hope y'all got some out of the battery information, the battery com conversation. Remember, guys, these are the top. Uh, according to this article, I keep saying that. I gotta make sure I say that. They have rated not ever start. Everstar, Everstar is the most budget-friendly battery. Okay, so if you're looking for a cheap battery, go for that one. This battery right here is good for cold weather. Um, I'm thinking you have to order this on the internet. They're not just sitting at AutoZone. Florida Kill batteries and everything else. I got mine at the dealer. Okay, yeah, so this is a good battery for cold weather. Out there with Uncle Mark and them at. All right, we're re we rehashing the, the video. Now, this battery right here is mainly good for hot temperature. When it's summertime hit and y'all want to change our battery, go for this Odyssey here. All right. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. AGM Extreme. That would get you through the summer months. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, uh, the best battery. No, there's one more in between. This battery here is best suitable for uh, best green and most sustainable lithium battery. All right. So just so you know. And ladies and gentlemen, according to this article, the best battery you can buy for your vehicle happened to be the Die Hard Platinum. All right. Uh, yes. If I cause sales of the Die Hard battery to go up, I want my cut. I want a freaking cut. But I'm just here to deliver the information. And I'm glad y'all tuned in to watch me do just that. Guys, I appreciate it. Thank you, Rocks Rose, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody. I don't want to leave nobody out. I can't one year ever start giving me about two years. That's what's an advanced auto sale Optima. All right, just so y'all know, these two places sell those batteries, are those Optima batteries. All right. So, guys, that's all I have, man. I got some other stuff to do. Thanks for watching. Freaking comment, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see y'all on the next video.